Hey YouTube, it's JP Dillon. Today we're going to look at some uh, something a little bit rare and off. This is a advertisement uh, for General Electric Compactron tubes and miniature tubes. And it's actually very craftily done uh, telling a story about a cabinet maker uh, that tried to make it big uh, but then when the miniaturization trend came along, it cost more money for him to make the same thing with the old technology. So, it's kind of a cool thing. Uh, this is the front cover, obviously. On the back side of the record, there's some uh, demonstration stereophonic tone tests, which are actually very limited frequency range, probably because at the time the average ceramic cartridge wasn't that hi-fi. They start at 12 and a half kilohertz and go down to 50 hertz, which I wouldn't exactly call high fidelity, but it's still cool to see, and it's uh, survived fairly well over the years. Let me get it out of the jacket. So we take it out. You see side one here. That's CM, the cabinet maker. And at first I thought, CM, maybe they're talking about a competitor like Curtis Mathis or something, but no, not really. Uh, and then the other side is the stereophonic equipment test. And it's recorded very softly. Uh, not sure why. Also, each section does not have a lead groove. When you get to the end of the section to play, it just stops and the needle stays there in that groove. Likewise, there's no lead-out grooves. There's just a blank groove for your needle to set in. Um, I may do a full rip of this later when I have more time, but I just wanted to show you guys right now how cool it was. So... What I am going to do, though, is uh, we're going to take our trusty little voice of music record player. This is a Model 1280, I believe. And we're just going to play it on here. Let the tubes warm up. It is recorded at 33 and a third rather than 45 because of the length of time that the story is. All right, we should be warmed up. Go ahead and cycle it. C.M. The cabinet maker boxed by miniaturization. Once upon a time, there was a poor struggling cabinet maker. He did excellent work and soon, people got to know that he and his product stood for quality. He became more and more successful. Until finally, he owned a very large plant. One day, cabinet maker, CM for short, got an idea. Why not put electronic equipment inside each cabinet? The idea was so good, CM went out that day and bought an electronics firm. The new combination was ideal. Sales and profits zoomed. He grew richer, and richer. Then one day, he got another idea. Why not miniaturize the cabinets and save on the cost of wood? Why shouldn't I join the rush to miniaturization? As the cabinets kept getting smaller and smaller and smaller, the cabinet cost kept going down and down and down. The people in the cabinet factory were very pleased. However, the people in the electronics plant were very, very unhappy. 
his engineers begged him to reconsider. We need more circuitry room. Heat dissipation will become a problem. Performance and reliability will suffer because of limited power output, unpredictable operating characteristics, and reduced environmental tolerances. Besides, costs are going to soar. And maintenance will be more difficult. I've made the boxes, put the components inside. The engineers worked and worked. Finally, a working model was produced. Unfortunately, development cost had gone so high that CM had spent almost all his money. Sadder still, the cost per item was so high that few could justify buying them. Sales went down and down. Things really looked black for CM. Then one day, fate smiled again on our struggling CM. He met one of his oldest customers, who still had one of CM's first tube-type black boxes. His customer raved so much about its performance and dependability that it suddenly dawned on CM what he had to do. He arranged a meeting with his staff and the GE tube representatives. GE's value analysis showed him the high price he had paid for unnecessary miniaturization. Production was halted. And the circuit redesigned to fit the function. Now CM is happy. The engineers are happy. And CM's customers are happy. Not to mention the GE tubes. So if you've got a problem with size, and miniaturized products are skyrocketing costs, get out of the miniaturization mill like CM did. Let him or your GE tube representative tell you about Compactrons, America's newest electronic marvel, which replaced tubes and transistors. Five-star tubes for tough industrial and military uses where reliability is a must. Ceramic tubes, your best buy for UHF applications. Tim Circuits, the only high-temperature, radiation-resistant, micro-miniaturization concept. And GE Photoconductors, a complete range of sizes, all hermetically sealed. All right, so that's the end of the record. I'll show you briefly the other side. It's obviously going to be meaningless here because this is a Menorah player versus a, a stereo one. See, it's recorded fairly quietly. 12,000 cycles. Ten thousand cycles. This definitely shows off the fact 5, that the wow and flutter cycles. isn't that great. Two thousand cycles. One thousand cycles. Seven hundred cycles. Five hundred cycles. Two hundred cycles. One 
100 cycles. You are probably not going to hear the 50. 50 cycles. So when it's done, it just hangs there in that groove. Reference tone 1000 cycles. Oh, that's for the left channel. We first did the right channel. 12,000 cycles. The first tone should be louder than the second. This is phase comparison. Now that they're out of phase, the tone's quieter because it's a stereo cartridge. And you can definitely hear the wow and flutter isn't great on this table. This table is kind of the beater. It's been had a rough life. But you can see the needle just stays in that groove. So we'll go ahead and just cycle it and it'll shut off. there you go that's the uh, little promotional record from General Electric boxed by miniaturization and then on the other side is the stereophonic equipment test uh, I'm not sure when this is dated really there's no uh, copyright date or anything on the record but given the fact that compactrons are a new thing I would figure some time in there the early to mid 60s maybe somebody has a better insight on that but anyways I uh, hope you guys enjoyed watching this if I get some spare time maybe I'll just rip it to a digital file uh, so it sounds a little bit better but just wanted to show this one off I don't remember how I came across this I just found it literally in a pile of records that I was going through the other day that I had uh, gotten from a shop that was closing so anyways thanks for watching more stuff to come